the Christmas I have in my mind is just that golden age of Christmas from the 1950s where Santa was really commercialized and you just have all the bright, shiny ornaments, the multicolored lights, the full Christmas trees. The imagery is really rich and very just hyper Christmassy. I don't know how to describe it. And I think I'm just very drawn to that because I love Christmas. So why not go to like the source? Hi, I'm Levin Reby and this is my handmade home in Fort Worth, Texas. Come on in. I started collecting vintage items. Really, it started with the vintage Christmas. I had spent several Christmases trying out different styles and nothing really felt right. And while they all looked nice, it just didn't really feel like that Christmas that I had in my mind. And so I came across a package of vintage Polish ornaments with the little indents and the teardrop shapes and that just started everything. When I bought this house, that was one of the first things I envisioned was Santa, sleigh, and reindeer in the front yard. I try to keep it a little refined, maybe, but it's Christmas, so it needs to be fun. So I'm okay with it being a little bit, you know, kitschy. I mean, that's good. That's a good thing, right? In the living room, I start with the mantle. It's kind of the most fiddly bit because there's lots of wiring and things and the mantle's not very wide so things are always like diving off as I'm trying to get everything done and I really hate doing it <laughs> but as soon as it's done I love it every every time I dread doing it a bit just because of the work but then once it's done I'm like okay this is why I do this like it's so beautiful these are vintage putz houses from Japan from the 1920s and 30s and they are made out of card stock. I didn't even know that these existed. I grew up with the ceramic villages, which are great. I love those. But something about these just feels a bit rough around the edges. I've added these little, um, they're called lead flats and they're, they're made out of lead, I guess. They're flat little people that have been painted and they're antique from Germany. I like that little detail where you can't see them from across the room, but when you get up close, you can really see that there's a whole little world living in the, in the village. There is something nice about having things in your home that have lived with many, many other people. It sounds weird saying that, but you know, that these items were purchased and saved and displayed every year and treasured and maybe passed down. So I think there's just something kind of special about that. These are real vintage cards. Most of them are handwritten, have little notes inside that somebody wrote. There's a mixture of Victorian postcards and ones that are more mid-century or even, even newer, but I like the kind of variety of Christmas styles that they represent. You have like this really traditional looking Santa. You have this kind of mid-century looking cat. And just a fun mix. And then I love to have a, a flocked tree here because I think that flocking a tree kind of makes it glow a bit. Flocking is just a way to add like a fake snow to the tree. Really, it's actually just paper. It's like a paper pulp. Cornstarch is the glue. It's a dry powder and I tint mine. And then you wet the tree, apply the powder, and then re-wet the tree and then it kind of sets and gives this artificial snow look. When I grew up, we did have tinsel, but it was a plastic tinsel that kind of you just threw on the tree and made a huge mess. So I didn't even really know what the metal, the old heavy metal tinsel was until I started getting into the vintage Christmas and realized, oh, that's a whole different type of tinsel. There's a reason why it looks the way it does in the old photos and the old movies. It's because it's not plastic, it's metal. But last year I put most of the tinsel on the dining room tree and it just blew up on Instagram. I really did not expect for it to have the response that it did. People of all ages just really are attracted to this kind of style of Christmas. I had thousands of messages about that tree. I guess there's no other artificial tree quite like it out there at the moment. So yeah, I'm sorry, it's mine only. <laughs> I'm sure there are others out there. I mean, I don't know where they all ended up. It was the only Christmas tree left on super clearance from at home. It had a lot of space. It was kind of sparse. And in the store, I think 
people probably shied away from it because you know, it wasn't full, but I knew, okay, that's perfect for showing off these vintage ornaments. And I've decorated it with just some really large ones, some really small ones. I've added this garland that I strung myself. It's antique German beads mixed with vintage beads from Japan. And I just like that kind of juxtaposition of that antique with that kind of kitschy vintage look. Last year I added tinsel to this tree but I went all out with my other tree and covered it in tinsel. So I kind of wanted this one to just be able to breathe and really showcase the ornaments. I have set a Christmas table for dinner and I've gone with the look of rustic elegance. I just wanted this tablescape to be fun, not ultra Christmassy. I wanted just to kind of have like a winter feel. So I have used some traditional Christmas colors, green, kind of a reddish, mauve. Um, I've also incorporated some orange with these bud vases. I've brought a vintage Christmas element by using these little bottle brush trees from the 1950s. The vintage Venetian glassware. I have these red transferware plates. I collect antique delft pottery from the Netherlands. This is up all year long, but I decided to pop these vintage cups on top and some little vintage bottle brush trees just to Christmas fire. I try to put a little bit of Christmas in every room. I just think that makes it fun. Each room can have a different holiday or Christmas theme. And I think that's kind of fun because I can use more of my decorations. So I felt like this big opening here between the kitchen and the dining room really needed something to kind of tie the rooms together. So I've added artificial garland um, along the entire opening and I've added a variety of vintage ornaments. Most of them are Polish. Most of them are like the teardrop Polish vintage ornaments. When I first started collecting vintage Christmas, I was having packages show up every day, sometimes three packages every day. Um, I really just went on a collecting spree the first year. I don't collect as much as I used to because I just have a good amount. The two main things that I collect for Christmas that I can't really turn down if I if I come across it are ornaments and then the putz houses. Those are the two things that I just can't really get enough of. My um, sourcing is definitely, it's, it's, it's evened out. My intention with decorating the kitchen was to just bring a good amount of Christmas in here while still keeping it fairly functional. So I added these wreaths on the kitchen cabinet because I really wanted there to be something at this eye line and not have everything just down here on the cabinet. So I've seen this done before and I really liked it. I wanted to keep my bedroom simple for Christmas. I still want it to feel like a bedroom. You know, you, you might need a rest. Your eyes need a rest from, <laughs> from the other rooms, but you know, it's still a little Christmas cheer. I thought that these little sconces were the perfect area to tie a bow, add some garland like I did in the kitchen, kind of tie the two together. I added these little intaglio ornaments that I made from antiques that I have. And then I just added some vintage touches as well. I didn't want to go super vintage in this room. I wanted it to feel calmer and a little bit more crisp. I love everything about Christmas. There's really nothing I don't like about Christmas. I love the family gatherings. I love the food. My favorite part is doing the decorating. I like to look at it after it's done, but the actual act of the decorating, it's just fun. It's a time to cherish. It's a time to just cherish what you have, who you have, and celebrate that. Celebrate life. If you like this video, subscribe to Handmade for more home tours like this. Happy holidays.